use, I'll use this for now. Is this one working? Yes. Good, good. Well, I want to welcome all of you today to a very special day here at Trinity Lutheran Church. Um, we're welcoming our visitors that might have come here uh, to visit us today, but we're also welcoming the visitors that are part of the Trinity Learning Center and Preschool. Um, as you probably know by now, today we're celebrating a 30-year anniversary of the Learning Center and Preschool right here at Trinity Lutheran. We've got some seats reserved because a little later in the service, some more of the families and children from the preschool are going to come in and join us. We thought it might be wise for some of the kids to have the chance to come in later rather than at the beginning in case they might get antsy a bit. But we've got some of our friends from the preschool right here already and we're really glad to have you here. And this service is gonna be celebrating the, um, the 30th anniversary. It's a little clumsy with this thing. I wanna draw your attention to these. These were made by the children for you today. And you see some are colored beautifully and some have little foot and hand prints. The little tiny children, they just put their feet in paint and put them on here. So you might have one from a, a, a two-year-old or a three or four or five-year-old and on up. Um, but they made them in honor of their celebration today and I hope that you'll take these home and put them on your fridge. They're beautiful and they're made with love. And you might notice also at the very top, it says, by works of love, love grows. And what, <clears throat> excuse me, what that refers to is our stewardship theme for the year. So we're getting an advanced look at our stewardship thing by theme. By works of love, love grows. So thank you, teachers and kids, for making all of these. We'll take them home and, and use them well. I want to thank Edie Ray for leading the praise band today. Uh, she's filling in. As you know, we're between leaders of the group. And uh, thanks, Edie, for pulling everybody together. The band sounds great today. I want to remind you that tomorrow evening at our 6.30 service, we're having a blessing of the animals right out there in the parking lot, hoping that it's not going to rain too much so that we, so that we can't sit under the tent and enjoy ourselves there. A blessing of the animals. You're invited to bring your animal or a picture of the animal if you think it's going to be a little too dicey to bring your actual dog or cat or whatever you have. Um, but we're going to have a blessing of the animals for our Monday night service, the last one of the season, our Monday night service at 6.30. In a little while, after our service is over today, we're celebrating the preschool uh, anniversary with a pig roast. And we were going to do that outside in the tent, but as you see, the rain is with us. So we're going to do it downstairs instead. And I want to give a special thanks to Brenda and Jim Robleski and family. They donated the pig today and they prepared it for us. So I hope you're going to stay and come on down for the pig roast right after the service today. Uh, and one last, well, are there any other announcements? Okay. Then one last announcement. There's a new song that we're going to sing right after the sermon. It's just exactly on point of the, of the, uh, the scripture lesson. It's called, Let the Little Children Come. And we thought we might go through it one time just to let you hear how it sounds so that when we come to that point, you can sing along. together shall we it's pretty straightforward let's try one more time let the children children come and do not hinder them for to such as these does a children of God belong let the children sounds great and then the the band will be singing the verses and we'll all sing the chorus okay well welcome to all of you and let us rise as we begin our worship service
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body. any children here this morning to join me up in front. Good morning, everyone. There's a lot of you here today. So did you hear Pastor Clay say before that we're having a party today? We're having a party because the Trinity Learning Center and Preschool, it's their 30th birthday, okay? So do, have any of you, do any of you attend the Learning Center? Do any of you go to the Learning Center? I know some of you do, right? Or some of you have attended in the past, yeah? Well, how many of you like parties? Show of hands. How many of you like parties? Like parties, right? I think everyone here likes parties, right? So what types of parties do we have? What types of parties are there? Birthday. There's birthday parties, like the birthday of the Learning Center Day. What other kinds of parties? Any others? You have parties in the summer, like maybe neighborhood parties or parties for the 4th of July, right? You might have wedding parties. I was just at a wedding party last weekend. Um, you might have... Do you, have, do you have family parties for like Thanksgiving or Christmas? We all have those, right? Well, at most parties, there's food, right? And there's tables. So I brought a table with me today up here. It's probably the biggest thing I've brought up for a children's message. But so when you, if you're like my family when we were growing up, um, not everyone would fit around one table, right? At your party, there's too many people, right? So people could sit wherever in the house. But then there was a special place at the party, and it was a table, like a card table, that looked something like that. Does anyone have an idea what that table's called? It's called the kid's table, right? <laughs> yeah? So while all the adults were in some other place, my sisters and my cousins and I were having fun at our own table, right? It's a very special place. Well, in our gospel lesson for this morning, which is from the book of Matthew, um, there's a group of kids, much like all of you here, um, and they're with their parents, and their parents, there's not a party, but they're, they're going to see Jesus because their parents want him to pray for and bless their children. But when they get to the place where Jesus is, um, some of Jesus' friends, the disciples, well, they think that Jesus is way too busy to, to bother spending time with those kids. And they try to make the kids go away. Um, that Jesus just has more important things to do. But Jesus stops them and he says this. He says, do not keep them from me. I want to spend time with them. God's kingdom is made up of people just like them. So there's a picture on the cover of your bulletin today, or up on the screen up there, well, maybe not up there, <laughs> um, on the bulletin today, of what that might have looked like with Jesus with all of those children, okay? So what Jesus was saying by inviting all those kids to come and to be with him was that if, that, if there was a party that day, that he wouldn't be sitting off by the adults, that he would be sitting right there at the kids' table with each and every one of you. So there are a lot of examples in the Bible of when Jesus talks about how much he loves kids. So God didn't send Jesus into the world as an adult, right? What did he send him into the world as? A baby, right. And you know the Bible says that children are a gift from God. And Jesus said, whoever welcomes children welcomes me. So Jesus loves kids just like you, and, and I, I came up with a list of reasons why, okay? So you are made in the image of God. 
You're not afraid to ask questions. You want to know about stuff. You're willing to try new things. You're great listeners. And you're excited about life. And those are all kinds of reasons that Jesus loves you. So Jesus loves it when you spend time with God in his creation, when you read the Bible, when you pray, when you help people. And he loves you just the way you are. So remember, not just for one day in that Bible story, but every day, and no matter what table you sit at, that um, Jesus loves you, and you are one of his favorite people. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who is always with us. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent him to be our friend and savior. Amen. Thank you very much for coming up. Have a great week. Good morning. The first reading is from the 12th chapter of Romans, starting with the first verse. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Here ends the reading. Please rise for our gospel reading, which comes to us today from the 19th chapter of the gospel, according to St. Matthew. Then little children were being brought to him in order that he might lay hands on them and pray. The disciples spoke sternly to those who brought them. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not stop them, for it is, such, it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. And he laid his hands on them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, once again we see the disciples are at odds with Jesus. They're trying to protect him, and they, so they try to send the little children and their parents away. And of course Jesus says, do not keep the children away, let them come to me. And Jesus prays for them, as we would expect him to do. In those days, you would wonder, well, why would, why would they be so stern about the children? Well, in those days, the children didn't have any rights, neither did the mothers. And so the men were the ones that were considered important to spend time with Jesus. Jesus should not waste his time with these little children. Of course, we don't think that way any longer. It doesn't make any sense to us today. But that kind of thinking doesn't go back that far. I remember when I was a real little one, there was a phrase, and I know some of you have heard this phrase, children should be seen and not heard. Well, you've heard it too, okay. <laughs> yeah, children should be seen and not heard. Well, we've kind of gotten over that idea, haven't we? We like to hear from the children, and we're going to hear from them today in a, in a wonderful way. It's maybe a hundred years or so ago, just to show you how this thinking goes, there's a, a rather famous story of a British lord who was a very important man in the government, and he lived on a big estate, and he kept a diary. He happened to have a son, and the son also, following in his father's footsteps, kept a diary. So a little son and a father. And one day the, the father decided to take his son fishing. So they go out and they spend the day fishing and at the end of the day the little boy writes in his diary, I went fishing today with my father. 
it was the best day of my life. And in the Father's Journal, there was this notice. Went fishing today with my son. It was a day wasted. It's so sad to hear that, isn't it? But some people have fought that way through the centuries. But we don't think that way anymore. We think that children are to be blessed and honored and loved and adored and heard from. And we like it when they're in church here with us. It's a wonderful change in attitude. It was 30 years ago that this congregation decided to bless the children and honor them in a very wonderful way. Trinity Lutheran Church, long before I even heard of you, Trinity Lutheran Church decided to open a preschool for the children of this community. And what a wonderful thing it was that, that you all have done. How many of you were here back in those days? Okay, quite a few of you. Well, thank you to all of you who made that choice back in those days. It's been a tremendous ministry in this community. We tried to figure out how many kids were affected in a positive way in this community, and we, we didn't find any records that would allow us to count. But by our best reckoning, we thought it was about 1,500 or so. 1,500 kids from this community had the blessing of coming here for preschool and, and, and later schooling during the summers and to learn about Jesus. Let the little children come to me, and indeed we did. What a great ministry that this congregation unfolded all those years ago. So we're celebrating this today, and it's an exciting day. It's an exciting thing to celebrate, and I'm so glad that we have visitors here. Sandy told me, by the way, Sandy's here. You all remember Sandy. <laughs> and Sandy told me on the way in, she said she and the preschool started at the same time. How wonderful. So it's a great ministry, and we're really excited to celebrate this today. And the kids are going to, more of the kids will be coming in with their parents in a little bit. What is it about children that Jesus so admired that he said, it is for such as these that the kingdom of God belongs? Well, there's something about the simplicity of their faith, the simple openness of their hearts that Jesus really admires. A friend of mine, a preacher, told me, told a story one time in a sermon about how he was preaching at another congregation he was a guest preacher, and he was delivering communion. And as he stood at the communion rail, handing out the bread from a loaf, there were two little boys. One was older than the other. And the one boy reached out his hands. And as he was about to peel off a piece of bread and place it in the boy's hands, the little boy said, give me a big piece. <laughs> and he said, well, well, why should I give you a big piece? And he said, because my little brother needs Jesus too. Yeah, there's something simple and wonderful about the faith of children that is just so open and receptive. There was a man in, uh, in a, my first congregation back in Fargo, North Dakota, and he was a person who lived in the Svee home. His name was Danny. The Svee home was a home for people who had, who had um, uh, difficulty with, with memory and, and with, uh, with knowledge, and he was, he was mentally challenged. But he was a wonderful member of the congregation. He was there every Sunday, the most faithful guy. Danny was there every Sunday. I remember one Sunday I was sitting up front, and Danny was in the back. Church was about ready to begin. And Danny always sat with a particular family that situated themselves right up here in the front. It was the dean of the local college and his beautiful wife and his beautiful children. And they sat there ready for service to start. And I watched from the front as, as Danny was in the back. And Danny, because he always sat with them, started to come down the aisle. And as he was coming down the aisle, he began to fidget and play with his bulletin. And bit, pretty soon, he rolled his bulletin into a little tiny baseball bat. He's walking along. And when he got up here to where the dean was sitting, the dean had bowed in prayer, preparing for worship. He decided he needed to let him know that he was here and ready to sit with him. And so he takes his little baseball bat and thwack! <laughs> right in the back of the dean's head as if he was swatting a horse fly. <laughs> the dean jumped alert and then made room for Danny to go in. Danny was the guy who stood at the door of the church every Sunday morning, and everyone he saw, little children, older folks, people of all ages, and Danny would say, there's my favorite pal. Good morning, welcome, there's my favorite pal. Everybody in the church was Danny's favorite pal. He, too, had just a simple, open, loving heart. And it's that kind of heart that I think Jesus is celebrating when he says, let the little children come to me, for such as these, to such as these belong the kingdom of God. Now, of course, most of us have outgrown those days in our lives when, we've been, when we have simple faith like that. Um, we've, be, we've learned to be more questioning, more scrutinizing, more careful, more critical in all our ways. 
And sometimes we use that kind of careful thinking about the Bible and about our faith. And when we do that, then it can lead us to be sometimes rather confused about what's going on in Scripture or how these theological ideas fit together. So as we get more sophisticated in our thinking, we can be a little bit more deep in our study, but also sometimes a little bit more confused. It's not necessary that we do all of that careful thinking, although it's a wonderful thing, and those of us who like to do it, it's a blessing to the church. But at the end of the day, it's the simple open heart that Jesus is celebrating in this story. You know, I happen to be a teaching theologian in the church. I don't say that with pride. I simply say that as a way to say that there's no place in the scripture where it says, to such as these, the teaching theologians of the church, belongs the kingdom of God. No. To such as these children belong the kingdom of God. So I hope and pray that we can all still retain some of that, some of that spark of our childhood faith, some of that simple, honest, open-hearted believing that the children have and demonstrate for us is a great example. I'm going to finish this morning with a famous story. This is a story that's been told in thousands of sermons, and I always avoided telling the story because it was just too cute and too tidy, and I was sure that somebody had made it up because it couldn't be true. But then I have a friend back in California who was another teaching theologian. He did a little research, and he found out that the story is actually true. And once I knew it was true, I thought, well, then it might be a good one to share. So here's the story. You may have heard it before because it's such a famous story. There was a great theologian of the 20th century named Karl Barth. He was a Swiss theologian. He was a Protestant. Some of you have heard about Karl Barth. Karl Barth wrote volumes and volumes and volumes of theological material. If you put it all on your bookshelf, they would, it would weigh your bookshelf down. Very complicated, very erudite, very important theological stuff. In the 1960s, Karl Barth was invited to go to Princeton Seminary in New Jersey and give, give a lecture, which he did. So after his lecture, and everyone applauded and thought it was magnificent, on his way out, there was a, a student from the seminary who was a, stu uh, a reporter for the student newspaper, and he caught Dr. Barth's attention, and he said, Dr. Barth, Dr. Barth, you've written so many wonderful things about the faith, but if you had to distill it all down to one idea, what would it be? And he thought for a second, and then he said, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. All of our theology, in that small nutshell. Let the little children come to me, Jesus said. And he offers them as an example to all of us, to just have an open heart, a simple believing mind. That's all that's required. May we all, on some occasions, be like the children. And God bless the children that are here today and that are still coming. And God bless this wonderful Trinity Preschool and Learning Center. And thank you, congregation, for having the wisdom to let the little children come to Jesus in that way. Oh.
as the kingdom of God. Let the children come, let the children come, and do not hinder them. Such as these are the children of God. Be Lord, and and he rise for our creed, a creed for God's children. We believe in God, our loving Father, yet who also loves and nurtures us like a mother loves her children. We believe that all people are God's children and that God loves us all with equal measure, even as parents love all of their children. We believe in God's Son, Jesus Christ who is our Lord and Savior. God sent him to the world in order that the children of God on earth could know of God's love and learn from his word. Jesus was the living personification of God's word and taught us to live according to God's love. He came to us, as all children do, from the womb of a woman. He grew, lived, taught, and healed people. He blessed the children and promised them the kingdom of God. In the end, he was taken from the world through death, so that by his death, all of God's children might have life. In three days, Jesus rose from the grave. We believe that he died for our sins and that through his death and resurrection, we have new life. We also believe that God's Holy Spirit is with us today. It is the same Spirit that was in Jesus. He has sent that Spirit into our lives and into the church to guide it and continue to inspire the church to love God and all of creation. The Spirit unites us all as God's church, and we pray that the Spirit will help us learn and love, respect, and accept all of God's children, wherever they may be in God's creation. Amen. Generous, compassionate God, we gather before you to pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you are our rock and our stronghold. Provide a strong foundation for your church on earth, united in joyful praise, service, and mission. In the face of all that divides us, show us your love and help us to see that all people are your children and that you love them, even when others seem foreign or offensive to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, you make deserts into gardens and the wilderness into a beautiful Eden. Restore the clean and pleasant beauty of your creation. Teach us to love your world as you do and care for it in every way we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, you shine the light of justice on all nations. Deliver us quickly from evil, protect the defenseless, and bring peace to communities and nations in turmoil. We pray especially for Charlottesville and Barcelona, and for all other places in your world where hatred reigns and evil results in the death of your children. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, you renew our minds and transform our bodies. Wait with all who seek a cure and long for relief from chronic pain. Bring comfort and healing to all who suffer illness in spirit, mind, or body, especially Ivan, Karen, Harley, Morgan, Faye, Francis, Donna, Jim, and Nate. We pray for Bob, Clarice, Dan, Larry, Carl, Mary, Bill, Nancy, and Ed. Bring comfort to Luann, Lula, Kevin, Judy, and family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also for those who make their special concerns known to us. Be with the family and friends of Mavis as they mourn her death, even as they celebrate the gift of her life among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also ask, Lord, that your healing hands and loving care be on Susan this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous spirit, you give gifts to all. Build up the people of this congregation. Increase our generosity, compassion, and cheerfulness. Teach us to trust one another, to work toward or together toward your mission in our midst, and to serve you with quiet joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, your Son, Jesus, loved the children and asked that they not be kept from him. We have brought the children of this community to you for the sake of their faith and education for 30 years. Bless the children of this community and help us to love them as Jesus loves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Jesus taught all of his children to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please take a moment to share that peace with one another. Pray. Every day 
written on earth and in heaven, O God, belongs to you. Thank you for making us stewards of your wealth. like to invite you to be seated and this is the moment when we're going to receive the children that have gathered from the preschool and their parents. Um, they're back there somewhere. And we thought that we would let them come in at the later point in the service so that they could um, hold things together a bit. There's Jean and those that are coming. All right, here they come. And you know, let's just thank them being part of our school. so glad you're here today. It's a great celebration. We couldn't do it without you. Now, uh, you've heard me say in the past, on Wednesday mornings, one of the highlights of my week is to gather with the preschool kids up here at 9.30. I bring my guitar, and we sing songs together. <laughs> They're some of my friends. And we have a great time every Wednesday morning. There's more space up front here. Come on all the way up. We have a great time every, every Wednesday morning, and we thought on this particular day it would be really neat if the children would sing for all of you, like they do on Wednesday mornings. So for the last month, we've been practicing. We've gathered up in front here, and when they come up front, they sing beautifully and loudly and joyfully, and we wanted to share that with you. But then we began to count how many of the older kids who carried the tune would be with us, and we thought, eh, maybe not be enough to really give the effect. So, even though a lot of them are here and they were prepared to stand up and sing for you, maybe they can sing along with the video we made. We wanted you to see how great they sound and how great they look. And so we have a video of them singing some of their songs. Oh. Are we ready back there, Todd?
Great. I want to introduce Jean Cunningham, our director for the last eight years. And she's going to introduce some of her teachers and staff. I'm going to have my staff stand, stand when I say your name, please. Miss Melissa Sparks is my assistant. Miss Amy. Miss Bobby. Miss Corey R. Miss Corinne S. Danny W. Danny G. Miss Deb. Miss Aaron. Ms. Gale, Ms. Kayla, Ms. Carly, Ms. Kelly, Ms. Chris, Ms. Melissa W., Nikki, Ms. Shirley, Ms. Taylor, Ms. Veronica. Um, these are our teaching staff, plus we have three absent, Ms. Katrina, Ms. Kiera, and Ms. Hannah. We thank you all for being part of this very important ministry in this community. And just while they're standing, if there's anyone else here that either went to the Trinity Preschool, there's some people that are 30 years old now, you know, and or if you had a child that was involved in the preschool, anybody that's been associated with the Trinity Learning Center Preschool, if you're here, would you also stand? All right. Great. We should also recognize Ms. Joanne. She was a teacher when the center began. Right. Thank you. Thank you. You can sit and see it now. So as a, a way to culminate this, we thought it would be wonderful to say something together in rededication to the years ahead. So we're having a prayer of rededication for Trinity's Learning Center and Preschool. I'd like to invite you to join me. Gracious God, we thank you that you inspired this congregation 30 years ago to develop this program for the children of our community. Lord Jesus, you bid the children to come to you. Thank you for loving and blessing them. We thank you also that you have loved and blessed the children in our school for 30 years. And we ask that you continue to love them through this ministry for years to come. God of wisdom, we thank you for our school teachers and staff for all who have served over the years and for those who serve us today. Give them, Give them courage, courage and, and patience to, to do their, their work with joy. Bless, Bless them, them through, through the smiles and hugs and, and cries and songs, and songs of, the of the children they serve. they serve. And bless us as a congregation of your vast church to be welcoming to the children, to teach them, to love them, and to support them in their growth in life and faith. By, By your spirit, spirit inspire, inspire us as we rededicate ourselves, ourselves to, to this ministry of bringing the little, little children, children to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
My friends, we are glad that you are here with us today to experience the presence of God in worship. Now we return to the worship of God, which is the work that we do in the world. Go with Christ before you to lead you, beside you to comfort you, Christ within you to strengthen you, Christ above you to bless you in all you do. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. How are you doing today? Good morning. Yeah, I know. Somebody's got their hands full. Good morning. Good morning. There's no excuse for you. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Did 
Yeah, well, as long as the pastor doesn't hear, I'm okay with it. <laughs> well, good, thank you.